Hello, chemistry students. Today we're going to be performing our heat effects and calorimetry experiment. In part A of this experiment, we're going to use a calorimeter to obtain the specific heat of an unknown metal and then determine the molar mass of that metal. In parts B through D, we're going to look at the heat effects of chemical reactions. Let's get started. We first need to obtain a thermometer our unknown metal sample in a stopper test tube, we're using unknown number six, and a calorimeter, which consists of two nested styrofoam cups and a lid. We also need to fill a 600 milliliter beaker two thirds of the way full with deionized water and start it heating on a hot plate and we'll eventually bring it to a boil. While our water is heating, we're going to determine the mass of our unknown metal sample and the stoppered test tube. The mass of our unknown metal and our stoppered test tube is 20.5 grams. We next need to determine the mass of just the stoppered test tube, so we've removed our metal and the mass of our stoppered test tube is 10.4 grams. We're now going to just loosely stopper our test tube. And we're going to place our test tube in our beaker with the boiling hot water. You want to be sure that the top of your metal is below the surface of the water and we're going to allow the metal and the test tube to sit in the boiling water for at least 10 minutes. While this is sitting in the boiling hot water, we're going to determine the mass of our calorimeter. The mass of our calorimeter is 8.5 grams. We're now going to add approximately 40 milliliters of deionized water to our calorimeter and we'll now determine the mass of our calorimeter plus the deionized water. The mass of our calorimeter plus the deionized water is 48.2 grams. We next need to insert our thermometer through the cover of our calorimeter and into the water inside the calorimeter. And we'll determine the initial temperature of our water inside our calorimeter. The initial temperature of the water in our calorimeter is 22.4 degrees Celsius. We're next going to remove our stoppered test tube with our unknown metal from our boiling water. This has been boiling for at least 10 minutes and we're going to add it to our calorimeter and we'll record the maximum temperature reached by the water inside our calorimeter. The maximum temperature reached by the water upon the addition of our hot unknown metal sample is 24.2 degrees Celsius. You should now be able to determine the molar mass of our unknown metal. This concludes the wet lab portion for part A of this experiment. In part B of this experiment, we're going to be looking at the heat of solution when we dissolve an unknown solid chemical, we'll be using unknown number two, in deionized water inside of our calorimeter. The mass of our calorimeter is 8.4 grams. We're next going to add approximately 50 milliliters of deionized water to our calorimeter. And then we will determine the mass of our calorimeter and the water. The mass of our calorimeter and the water is 57.5 grams. 
We next need to determine the mass of a clean beaker. The mass of our beaker is 66.5 grams. We will now add about five grams of our unknown chemical to our beaker. The mass of our unknown chemical plus the beaker is 71.5 grams. Now we will insert our thermometer into our calorimeter and determine the initial temperature of the water inside our calorimeter. The initial temperature of the water in our calorimeter is 21.2 degrees Celsius. We will now add our unknown chemical solid to the water in the calorimeter and determine either the minimum or maximum temperature reached as our unknown solid dissolves in the water. The maximum temperature reached of our solution in the calorimeter is 39.0 degrees Celsius. You should now be able to calculate the heat of solution. This concludes the wet lab portion of part B of this experiment. For part C of this experiment, we're going to determine the heat of neutralization using two molar sodium hydroxide and two molar hydrochloric acid. We're going to measure out 25.0 milliliters of the hydrochloric acid, which is done here, and 25.0 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide, which is done right here. We'll now determine the original temperatures of the hydrochloric acid and the sodium hydroxide solutions individually. The initial temperature of our two molar sodium hydroxide solution is 21.0 degrees Celsius. The initial temperature of our two molar hydrochloric acid solution is 20.7 degrees Celsius. I've added our 25.0 milliliters of our two molar hydrochloric acid solution to our calorimeter and we've recorded our initial temperature of the two molar hydrochloric acid as 20.7 degrees Celsius. We're now going to add our 25.0 milliliters of our two molar sodium hydroxide solution to the calorimeter, and we're going to record the maximum temperature reached by the neutralized solution. The maximum temperature of our neutralized solution is 34.9 degrees Celsius. You should now be able to calculate the heat of neutralization for the reaction. This concludes part C of this experiment. For part D of this experiment, we're going to repeat the same procedure as in part C, except for we're going to use two molar acetic acid instead of our two molar hydrochloric acid. So I've gone ahead and measured out 25.0 milliliters of our two molar acetic acid in one graduated cylinder. And I've measured out 25.0 milliliters of our two molar sodium hydroxide solution in our other graduated cylinder. We'll now transfer the 25.0 milliliters of our acetic acid solution into our calorimeter and record the initial temperature. The initial temperature of our two molar acetic acid solution is 21.0 degrees Celsius. The initial temperature of our two molar sodium hydroxide solution is 21.0 degrees Celsius. We will next add our 25.0 milliliters of two molar sodium hydroxide solution to the acetic acid solution in our calorimeter and we will record the maximum temperature reached by the neutralized solution. The maximum temperature reached by our neutralized solution is 34.4 degrees Celsius. You should now be able to complete part D of this experiment and illustrate Hess's law. This concludes the wet lab portion of part D for this experiment. This concludes our heat effects and calorimetry experiment. Thank you for joining me for this laboratory.